the weekly numbers. I'm going to run through those quickly for the week. Uh, the S&P down just fractionally. Same as the case it looks like for all three of these major indexes, even though they were just fractionally higher today. So we've been moving in this range for a while now. And I want to bring in Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Uh, Melissa, it's good to see you on this Friday. What do you make of the stock market? Well, not much right now. <laughs> To be honest with you, we are caught in the tightest range that I've ever seen for the last 15 years since I've started trading. For 15 solid days straight, the market in the QQQs has been in a very tight range. We're seeing a lack of commitment or no commitment or no conviction from buyers because the market isn't lifting higher out of the range and the market isn't going lower below the range either. Like we had Tesla earnings yesterday, which fell. Tesla gap down. The market should have fallen, fallen off the planet, but it didn't. Then we had bank earnings that came out when earnings season started. We had great earnings from JPM. The market should have broke out higher and rallied through the area. Couldn't do it then either. So this market is driven 100% right now by what the Fed's going to say, what the Fed's going to do. So the market may be in a range, even though there's earnings in the next two weeks before the meeting, the market may stay in this range with good earnings, bad earnings, because the market really doesn't care about earnings. The market cares about what the Fed's going to do. And again, they're probably going to raise rates. Okay, well, based on the data uh, that we've seen, Melissa, on the jobs front, the inflation front, in the past month or so since the Fed's last meeting mid-March, do you expect that the Fed does change its tune, that it says anything different at the next meeting, the next decision that is on May 3rd? No, because they're still trying to fight inflation because we still have high inflation. And the Fed's only tool for that in their mind really is to continue to increase rates, which is of course going to do what? It's going to slow down lending, it's going to slow down the economy, and that's unfortunate. And, 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 and already, we've already been talking about the fact that we're going to go into recession towards the end of 2023. In fact, uh, you know, Elon Musk did an interview on another channel the other night and said, yeah, we're going to go into a recession. So the fact is that when you have all of these things coming at the market at runs, high interest rates, uh, people are scared because of the bank collapses, and then you have this market in this tight range, which isn't showing conviction. People are worried and they don't know what to do about their investments. So people have moved a lot of money around with the bank, with the banks going under. People are worried about the FDIC 250,000 limit. And you have a lack of commitment from people overall deciding to buy more in their investments. Even in something like Tesla, which is a great company that fell, you know, sometimes when stocks fall like that, they get a lift. People say, oh, this is a great place to buy. It's a perfect price. It's a great price. But it fell. It fell yesterday. In fact, it could even fall even lower. So you have very strong companies right now that aren't reacting positively. And even Goldman that came out and gapped down in earnings and rallied really didn't go anywhere higher. Mm -hmm. So let's say we do get a recession. I mean, we've been talking about a recession since the start of 2022, right? And, and we did technically actually have a recession, two back-to-back -back quarters of negative GDP growth, even though the administration said the jobs market is holding up, this isn't a typical recession. What does that mean for the stock market? Can the stock market over time grind higher or does a recession create a red flag uh, predicting that stocks would go down? Well, typically you don't always have the economy and the stock market do the same things. So you could have a great economy and the stock market fall, you're going to have a bad economy and the stock market rally. So that's, let me just put that out there. But as far as the overall market goes, I think that the last time that we saw brand new all-time highs in the QQQs was November of 2021, not 2022, 2021. So we're talking 18, 20 months ago. As far as the SPY at the beginning of 2022, we had brand new all-time highs, but we went all of last year without seeing new highs. And this year, we may go the rest of 2023 without highs. And if banks are going to slow down lending, okay, that will have an effect on small businesses, large businesses, commercial businesses. And as you've seen even this week, Meta's laying off people. Companies since the beginning of the year have been laying off people because they are predicting that we are going to tighten up as far as economically. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you have the banks tighten up on lending? So people want to buy stuff then they tighten up on lending, they're paying more in interest rates or they lower their credit card limits. What happens when people want to go buy properties or mortgages and want to get a mortgage, they can't afford as much. So ultimately it slows down then the housing industry. When you have lending slowing down, you have all types of businesses that borrow, 
whether it's commercial lending, whether it's lines of credit, and that slows down or costs more. And so if sales are going down for businesses and lending is going up, again, you're gonna, you're gonna, you might have some companies that are laying people off or tightening up or even going out of business. And so as far as the stock market, the reaction to the market goes, it wants to see the Fed ease up on interest right. rates until the Fed makes up their mind that it, they're gonna lower rates, which I don't think they're gonna do in 2023. The market isn't going to react positive. So we could go into recession. The economy could go into downturn, but the Fed could lower rates and the market could lift. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I'm saying that would be a scenario with not a good economy, but a good market. Right. It is tricky sometimes, that's for sure. Common sense doesn't always necessarily play out right between the two. Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the Stock Squish. Uh, Melissa, thank you.